Hey everybody, this is A7X Fan Ben, and welcome to episode number 15 of the Collection Review Series. So today I'm going to be covering the Jade Rebellion ships. I have almost all of their ships in my collection, and you'll see the numbering just goes from 001 up to about 23. They were released with the South China Sea set, and unfortunately that was the only set that they saw action in. This is one of the minor factions. And usually my favorite minor faction, uh, the Corsairs are cool as well, but I think the Jades are, they're usually my favorite minor faction. And I do have the Bouchuan, but I'm going to be doing her in a separate uh, Ten Master collection review video. So let's just jump right into things. The first ship from South China Seas is the Grand Dynasty. So this one isn't too, isn't too great as like kind of a flagship. I usually refer to the number 001 ship as like a flagship of that faction, or at least of that set. This one doesn't represent the set all that well. South China Seas was a really great set, as you may know from the podcast set review that I did with God Mason. But the Grand Dynasty, very slow speed, an ability that's um, combat oriented, which is solid for a six mass of junk with reasonable cannons. But you're probably not going to use it a lot unless in a bigger game. So other than Captain Helmsman, maybe some named crew, the Grand Dynasty isn't really a great choice. Um, I think to make the name more fitting, they should have given her 5 or 6 cargo and maybe L speed and or improve the cannons a bit. Um, for 15 points, this is a little bit disappointing. Uh, but the next one is not. The Grand Temple. This is the original version. You may have seen HMS Grand Temple in the English. The first ever uh, collection review video had the HMS Grand Temple. This is the original version from SCS. Um, it has the reverse captain ability, great cannons, solid speed, very low cargo for a six master or a large ship in general, and a very high price tag, partly because of that reverse captain ability, which really is only worth about two points, um, or arguably one in a way. Uh, the Grand Temple, though, is one of the best Jade Rebellion gunships, and you could do a lot of interesting crew setups here. The three cargo is just enough to put... Uh, Captain Helmsman and then like an SAT crew. The Jades have a few you'll see in the next episode of this series. And you can also go crazy with uh, Dragon Eyes, um, who is ca gold capture with Captain, stuff like that. So there are, some, there are some good crew options despite the low cargo. So the Grand Temple is a great ship. Not as good as the 15 point English version of course, but still one of the best Jade Rebellion gunships. Uh, the Grand Mountain here is another S speed ship. She's cheaper and slightly better armed than the Grand Dynasty, so she has a little bit of a combat advantage. The ability is anti-English, so it's a little bit more restrictive, but the Grand Mountain is usually a little bit better of a gunship than the Grand Dynasty. Almost the same things apply, though. Similar cost, same speed and cargo, so just kind of disappointing, really, especially for such a cool name. I think maybe like a defensive ability and more cargo would have been would have been appropriate here. I do the the speed makes sense though, but it's still not an overwhelmingly good gunship, but not a terrible one. Uh, the Grand Wind is kind of a strange enigma. This is the one Jade Rebellion six master that's not built to be a gunship. The other five I've got all five. Uh, the other five are all gunships basically. This one you can see none of her cannons are better than rank four, but she does have six cargo. So this is a weird like very slow treasure ship of sorts. Not really a runner, because she's very slow, but I would do a helmsman. And then the Jays do have a couple crew with the SAT Seam Action Twice ability. So that pairs perfectly with reroll. So you can be moving up to 4S uh, relatively often with helmsman and SAT, and probably an oarsman as well. So, and then you'd still have four or five cargo available. So the Grand Wind. Um, I think she's slightly underrated. Most people just kind of write her off because of the speed and cannons. But between the the cargo and the ability, she can actually be turned into a reasonable, very durable, and very slow um, treasure ship. So not a bad ship. I think she's kind of a overlooked option, especially because of the Grand Temple and the next one, which is the Grand Path, which is arguably on par with the Grand Temple as the best Jade Rebellion gunship. Um, this one has five cargo, all 2S cannons, so the best ranks overall, very accurate. And she's a boarding monster. So this is like a short range brawler. You've got all S range cannons, and then she's got a boarding ability that lets you know she wants to get up in personal and uh, be a boarding beast. So this one is great with Dragon Eyes, Captain with gold, uh, gold capture abilities for 10 points. 
and I like using specialists on this because they're limited to S range and then you've got good accuracy. So fire pot, stink pot specialists, those are good on the grand path as well. Got plenty of cargo. This could be kind of a kind of a very dangerous hybrid, I suppose, with like captain and helmsman and three cargo open and maybe a smaller game if you couldn't go couldn't go nuts with crew. But overall the grand path, it's between the Grand Temple and Grand Path, this is always a good argument. Um, which one is better? It's really just personal preferences. Um, I like the Grand Temple a little bit better because of the range, which combines well with the junk keyword along with the speed. But the Grand Path is cheaper with more cargo and is a bit more focused on boarding. So it's really a toss up and they're both fantastic ships and they're both very good looking ships too. Uh, the Divine Wind, so now we're into the three massive junks. There's a big drop off here. You can see I've got five, six masters, but there's no four or five mass junks. So now we're into like mid-sized ships instead of, you know, very large ones. So the, the Divine Wind here is pretty, pretty average. Nothing really exciting here. Same ability as the Grand Dynasty. And this one I would put Captain Helmsman, leave two cargo open and just kind of be a, kind of a basic hybrid. Really, not really, not really anything special. The East Wind I think is actually pretty cool. I like to put a captain on her, maybe an oarsman, uh, and just run her as a hybrid, actually. There's not a lot of cargo, but you've got two 2S guns, and then you have an island treasure trading ability, which is neat. So it's kind of like a poor man's hybrid. So with a captain and oarsman, you only have one, or you only have two cargo spaces open, but you've got solid speed, a bit of firepower, and uh, a nice treasure based ability all for only 13 or 14 points. So I think the East Wind is an overlooked option and uh, we'll see why soon, of course. A couple better ships coming up. The Sea Wind is kind of a bizarre one. This one has amazing speed, solid cargo, so you'd think Gold Runner, but then you see that giant point cost, which is as high as the Grand Path. And uh, it's partly because of this ability. So it's kind of like the reverse cheerleader ability instead of giving away cannon bonuses when as she takes it. Um, to improve her own cannons, but you're probably not going to use her as a gunship. I did a tiny bit a few times, but this one is actually an okay gold runner. I like to max out her speed with a helmsman, so you could go 4S for 19 points and 3 cargo. Not a great deal, but for the Jades, um, they don't have a ton of gold runners or a lot of ships in general, so it's not a bad option in a larger game, maybe 80 or more points. And I've used her a few times now as a scout ship in campaign games. I really like using this ship in huge games because the cost doesn't matter that much and with 4S max speed up to three cargo available and uh, and just a good, it's a good utility ship in campaign games, especially like island upgrades and Century of the Empires, Economy Edition, things like that. So if you're playing a campaign game, I, I actually would recommend the Sea Wind quite a lot. Uh, the Typhoon, this one I find pretty boring, uh, kind of bad cannons for the most part. Uh, Reroll, but there's not a lot you can do with it. This one, kind of like the Divine Wind, I would just do Captain and Helmsman, make a hybrid. Um, if you don't do a Captain, I don't know, you're kind of wasting Reroll and the cannons. Not that they're very good, but yeah, Typhoon, not a good one. Uh, Virtuous Wind, this is the best Jade Rebellion ship, almost, almost without a doubt. You can make a case for a few of the Six Masters and the Bauchuan. But the Virtuous Wind is generally their most competitive ship. And you can see she's absolutely stacked. This is one of the most stacked ships in the game. And uh, you may already know by that, I mean, just great everywhere. I mean, great speed, awesome cargo, the best guns money can buy, uh, the home island rating ability, so it's perfect with that speed and cargo. Home island rating works very well with that combo of speed and cargo, all for a fair point cost. Pretty pricey for a three master, but she should be. She could be, I'm thinking 16 or 17 and she would still be used almost as much as she is which is a lot kind of too much i think but but yeah she's far and away the best three master the jades got and generally the best ship they got so usually you want to do some kind of hybrid setup captain and helmsman maybe some other stuff um you could just keep it simple like that though maybe add an explorer and or an oarsman for protection or exploring capability or you could just do Captain Helmsman, leave three cargo spaces open for gold. You could raid enemy gold runners, um, get gold from home islands or wild islands. So the possibilities are almost endless. Virtuous Wind, great ship, and one of the better one of the better three masters in the whole game, really, not just Jade Rebellion. Uh, Clear Wind, another boring one. Here we've got that 
that a bit that plus one to kin rolls against previously shot at which i get pretty sick of the jade's got too many of those ships here uh this one is a little bit better than the typhoon and the divine wind so um you've got solid firepower and the potential to be kind of a slow hybrid so the clear wind is decent got a nice blue hue to her sails and hull as well all right so we're into the two masters the sea serpent is expensive but i, I suppose effective for um for her size because you've got speed accuracy and decent cargo along with the reverse captain ability so this one i've used with a smoke pot specialist and a captain before kind of like a smoke and mirrors strategy um you could run it empty but i'd probably want a captain to take advantage of the firepower biggest problem here is the cost i think this ship is probably worth about 10 points so if you put a captain on 16 points for something that's going to be dismasted by two hits that's not a great value for your points so the virtuous wind one point more you get more cargo and durability so not a great ship just overpriced for what she gives you sea lion is even worse though this one doesn't have a lot going for it she's got that ability where you can convert gold to cannons at your home island but problem is she's not gonna be a gunship anyway with her existing cannons and you know she's not very durable so she's not really good at a gold runner either because we're gonna see better ones in a second so kind of a boring not very kind of a confusing ship she doesn't really know what role she should play uh the sea tiger i do like i've used the english version of this uh quite a lot in my early games i was able to get her back in like 2011 so the english version has seen a ton of usage i use this as an empty gold runner pretty much exclusively i don't really see much point in putting any crew aboard um the english one could be a flotilla tug as well jades don't they don't have a flotilla but um pretty basic just grab some coins and zip around uh the sea crane this one is actually quite good it's got the plus one gold ability and you can see solid speed cargo and gun so this one has a nice package i would put probably a captain uh, and then she could be kind of a small hybrid with the potential to raid enemy gold runners and uh if you wanted to you could leave the captain on an island get grab three coins and then add plus one to one of them so very good ship actually a nice a nice little hybrid she'd be perfect with four cargo but even with three she's quite usable and one of their better two masters sea phoenix is next this one i kind of like actually i think she's a little bit underrated and you've got another hybrid pretty much i would do captain and helmsman then you'd have two cargo left over you could raid enemy gold runners you've got accurate cannons and enough cargo to get gold um in various ways so the sea phoenix is another recommended one to get a hold of nice ship there sea duck yet another nice little two-masted hybrid this one i usually either send her out empty or as kind of a specialty sniping support gunship so at least the captain maybe a helmsman as well if you're going to use her as a gunship and then you've got cannons that are decent on their own but then you can double them to try your luck with sniping in which case she can be a decent uh, support gunship but that being said just the captain with two cargo spaces open as a hybrid to get gold and to fight is not a bad option either so sea duck pretty good good one and you may already know the cursed got the sea duck in this same ship basically for the curse in ocean's edge that was a boon for the curse because they need you know ships like that they don't have many good ones quite like that uh the admiral yi is an interesting one um this one is their first turtle ship so the turtle ships were rare just like the six massive junks um this one has that same previously shot out ability so pretty boring the turtle ships problem is that you can still ram the mast off so even though the panels are only eliminated on hits if you succeeded a ram it still knocks out the mast and they only have one so uh, they're taken out of action really quickly they aren't too pricey usually so that's good but ones like this are just tough to justify using so because you need a captain helmsman to make her a good gunship but then for 11 points you could get you know the sea crane with a helmsman or with a captain for 12 for example so not a good one there really Hanson Island is probably slightly better because she's got another cargo space and a more accurate cannon. Uh, the ability is not very fitting though. She's probably not going to board much. Um, just kind of, it's okay, but not great. The cannon and the cargo are decent, but other than that, you're not getting great value for your points. Uh, the Glorious Treasure is one of their best turtle ships. 
because she's got a great ability. So when you're pinned, you eliminate a crew and a mass from the ram ship. So that's a really devastating ability. You can combine that with a shot or a successful ram to really, or maybe if you get really lucky with a boarding party, you could really do a lot of damage to enemy ships um, if you get the first shot and uh, slam them hard right away. Um, and you get a fair point cost too. So the Glorious Treasure, very good ship to use. Pretty much a suicidal uh, small gunship, but quite an effective one at that. The Noble Swan is really good because, uh, well, a few reasons. So she's got good speed, good cannon, enough cargo to add a, a captain and something else if you want, like a helmsman. And ramming cannot eliminate this ship's mass. So that's something I think should have been built into the turtle ship keyword to make them more viable and relevant. So this is the only turtle ship in the game with that ability, I believe. I use it as a house rule sometimes just to make turtle ships more interesting and viable. But Noble Swan, since she has that ability, along with her other stats, which are decent and a quite a cheap cost, the Noble Swan is one of the better turtle ships and a pretty nice looking ship as well. The Proud Tortoise has a defensive ability too, but it's not as effective, um, at least not for turtle ships. It's still pretty good though, Elver Inch Cans can't hit the ship. Also, it's pretty much the same stats, just one point more, and with a 2L gun instead of 2S. Uh, the Proud Tortoise I do like quite a lot. This is another of my favorite turtle ships. Got three good ones in a row here, Glorious Treasure, Noble Swan, Proud Tortoise. Those are pretty much their best three, I think. Um, so highly recommended if you uh, can get a hold of those. They're pretty rare. Um, South China Sea is pretty expensive, but the Proud Tortoise does her job reasonably well, even though the Noble Swan and the Glorious Treasure are still better. Uh, the Floating Stone has reroll and then just is just kind of meh other than that, so not a great ship. Uh, the Sea Snake has nice cargo for a turtle ship, but other than that, she's not going to be boarding much. Bad cannon, bad speed. Her cost is the highest we've seen yet, even though she's one of the worst turtle ships we've seen yet, so this one could have been probably five points, and then she might see usage as like an empty gold runner. So, all right, and the last Jade Rebellion ship is the Dragon's Talon. So this one is, I guess, a decent gunship, but you need a Captain and Helmsman to make her that, so then, then you'd be spending 13 points. Um, I've had okay success with this because she almost always hits. She's got World Hater, but you, you can only apply it to one cannon, so it's not really... A great deal you want to use world hater on something with like at least three or four masts to get the bonus on multiple cannons so here uh, this is this could be another five point ship really 13 points is a lot to spend on one you know nearly guaranteed hit so not a great ship but if you really need another gunship for the jades um she will be accurate at the least so Thanks for watching, this was episode 15, and uh, stay tuned for episode number 16 where I'll cover Jade Rebellion Crew.